Music has always been able to move me um, very quickly and uh, very powerfully. Hi, I'm Paul Beecham. I've been making guitars for nearly 20 years now and uh, they seem to be central to my life. Some people like Lamborghinis and <laughs> other people like Fords, um, which is fine, you know, it's, that's the way the world is. And, uh, but the people who have uh, a particular kind of need for a handmade instrument, um, they like the aesthetic of the object, so some people see it very much as um, just a beautiful object from the exterior to the sound that it produces. Other people are of sometimes very disinterested in what it looks like so long as it sounds exquisite. And uh, so you're always trying to deal with a degree of subjectivity uh, that the instrument beholds for the person who is buying it in a way, which makes it a curious object of desire. Biggest um, problem I had was developing patience. Uh, when I first made, I'll say a couple, but it was like maybe five, six, seven instruments, uh, I would do that impetuous thing of making what I considered to be a dreadful mistake and I would just pick the guitar and go like, and it would be broken. And uh, this went on and I thought, well, this is no way to proceed. I can't end up with a pile of broken wood that is only really fit for a bonfire. Uh, so that sort of bonfire of the vanity just sort of, <laughs> sort of sat with me and it forced me really to think about how things are constructed and how things are handmade and knowing that you know, things are never perfect, there are always errors that are built into your world. You cannot escape them, but you have to deal with them. And uh, in a way, it, it was, uh, well, I would make mistakes and uh, I would then patch them up with a very beautiful piece of inlay and it wouldn't look like a mistake any longer. It would look like something very purposeful. And uh, I realised that there were other levels of attainment one could have in the constructing these instruments which embodied all that um, trials and tribulations as you call it and was able to absorb them and it could be to my advantage to work creatively with it. If you go to any forest in the UK, you'll find charcoal makers, you'll find bodgers making uh, chairs or tables, and you'll probably find an instrument maker hidden in the woods somewhere. And uh, true enough, there was a very good maker uh, in the Forest of Dean, which is close to Wales, uh, which I visited and he was very inspiring and helpful to me and gave me some inroads of how you could, if you like, use various strategies for putting things together and insurance policies. Um, that is making moulds, um, finding um, methods which allow you to do things consistently and with and are repeatable in one sense. I'm 75 now so I think possibly I've got 10 more years now what can I do in that time creatively? Uh, We'll see. I, I, yeah, it, it's it's a dilemma, and, uh, but it's a fact of life, and you have to get on with it, <laughs> deal with it. But I don't see me losing any interest. I mean, in fact, my interest is deeper than it's ever been uh, in making these instruments. Now, it's always been an honour to uh, sit 
in this position and receive the sound which is coming out of my instrument, whether, whether it's fully fledged, if you like, or not. So that experience is um, irreplaceable. When somebody comes into the workshop and then takes it away and plays it in a concert, um, it's very, very, um, I feel excited and I, I, I do want to nudge the person and say, that's my guitar. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, obviously I'm very proud when that happens and I'm, uh, it's a great uh, relief to see that um, the instrument is also um, sharing its life, you know, with that other person now. And uh, yeah, they're like, their children have gone out to play, you know. <laughs> you can hear them and listen to them and watch them. It is, it is wonderful.